Um, ladies and gentlemen, the USAID Trade Hub in collaboration with the Mpumalanga Economic Growth Agency is pleased to hold this webinar for the Mpumalanga companies, especially those that have interest in exporting to the US. Most importantly, um, making sure that um, we assist them in terms of market entries and so that they can understand how to successfully export commodities uh, to the US. Uh, this webinar will feature presentations from the USAID Trade Hub Partners, Trade Promotion Services Providers, TPSPs, such as Enterprise Florida, OnsDeck, Albert Scott, Africa Trade Platform, and Service Capital. So um, most importantly, this is the opportunity for companies and everyone uh, who's here to engage with the experts in the field who will provide valuable insights and information about the process, things like legislations, opportunities to market entry in the US. Um, as we proceed, some of the housekeeping will be uh, that please let's all make sure that um, we are all muted at all times and our cameras are off unless if the presenters are on. There will be um, Q&I at the end of the session. However, in the meantime, if there are some questions, uh, everyone is welcome to put those questions on the uh, chat box. Thank you very much. I am uh, Lady Azicha Gungwa. I will be your moderator for today. I'm the trade advisor. A responsible for foreign trade promotion at the Mpumalanga Economic Growth Agency, which is the official trade and investment promotion agency for the province of Mpumalanga. I am very much passionate about international trade promotion, and it is um, webinars, meetings, and engagement like this that um, are, are what we, we, we work for at MEGA so that we can you know, ensure that with the opportunities available, we are able to assist companies to export their products to countries such as the US. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the program for today. We are starting at three o'clock. We, we are envisaging this to take uh, one and a half hour. However, sometimes it, it may happen that the slides are a bit longer or our Q&A takes much longer. We are requesting that we will have, we will have to add 30 minutes or less. Please bear with us if that happen. If it doesn't happen like that, that would be great. Um, I've already introduced myself, Lady Azucha Bungwa, your moderator for today. Um, Mamusa, can you just please go back a little bit to, so that I can just highlight the program? Uh, yeah, we will have the welcome um, and USA Trade Hub overview uh, done by uh, Mr. George Makore, who's the Deputy Chief of Party at the USA Trade Hub. The introduction from MEGA will be done by Mr. Andrew Bulter, our manager for in trade promotion. And Abigail Ellery will, will lead us with the doing business with the US state of Florida uh, as the director of Africa Regional Office Enterprise in Florida, Inc. Um, Paul Fenter, the managing partner at OnDeck, will at 1535 lead us through the route to market supplying US distributors and retailers and all the opportunities. Um, from Africa Trade, um, uh, at the Africa Trade platform will be presented by Mr. Warwick Blamey, who is the group CEO of Africa Trade platform, Subvest Capital. And uh, just before Q&A, we'll have Ms. Tlomo Hrinblad, the president, of Albert Scott, who will deal with the e-commerce management. And then we will have the Q&A, which involves everyone. We are all encouraged to participate and um, 
engage with the experts. And then the closing remark will come from our DEDET, the Department of uh, Economic Development and Tourism, the Deputy Director there, Mr. Lehene, who we work closely with. Thank you. We will have the first speaker, Mr. George Makore. Uh, Mr. George Makore is the development professional. He has over 25 years of experience in the SADC region, working on programs that are aimed to enhancing regional integration and strengthening the South African region's competitiveness and in roles focusing on trade, investment, policy, and communication is an all-rounder. Um, yes, I saw uh, Mr. Makore, the platform is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator. Uh, sorry for calling you MC earlier. Um, so okay. used to MCs. <laughs> um, so, uh, colleagues, uh, good afternoon. Uh, yet again, I think um, for um, the number of uh, for most of you we have interacted in the past, I want to recognize uh, uh, the presence and continued support uh, from uh, our uh, partners, um, Abigail from uh, Enterprise Florida, uh, Paul Fender from uh, On Tech, and uh, Lomo from Albert Scott, as well as uh, Warwick uh, from ATP. Now, we have been in the trenches together for quite a while now, so we do appreciate your continued support. Uh, and a partnership with the USAID Southern Africa Trade and Investment Hub. My role today is, has been, I think, traditional, or uh, the case in the past is just to uh, share with you who the USAID Trade Hub is and uh, what our role is uh, when it comes to um, uh, export and investment or trade and investment um, activities in the region. Uh, before I go into that, I, I would like also to actually take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, our partner here today, uh, um, Pamalana Economic Growth uh, uh, Agency, uh, for uh, having worked with us on organizing this event, and I hope that it's going to be uh, fruitful for everybody. Uh, so, who is USAID Southern Africa Trade and Investment Hub? We are a USAID funded project that has been in existence for the past uh, uh, over five years. Uh, we started operating in 2016 and uh, uh, we are a project and as a project, we, uh, we have a lifespan and uh, our lifespan is due to expire at the end of September this year. This is why it is very critical for, for us to partner with uh, uh, all the partners that we have here today, uh, those that are operating or uh, act as uh, in the ecosystem to ensure that uh, when the project is no longer there, uh, you as exporters uh, can still be able to uh, interact with these partners and continue to do what uh, we are doing, or what the hub will be. Uh, working with you on. So it's important uh, to have these uh, events to get to hear what uh, these service providers or TPSPs uh, provide uh, so that uh, you have a go to place uh, in the event that uh, the USA trade up is uh, to pass the scene. So um, our geographical scope uh, where we operate, the project covers nine countries. Um, and these nine countries are in, on the, in, in the picture there. Uh, we're looking at uh, um, Angola, Botswana, Eswatini, Lesotho, uh, Malawi, Namibia, Mozambique, um, South Africa, where we are, uh, and, 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 and Zambia. Um, we often want to call it SACU uh, plus uh, four countries, SACU uh, members, the five SACU members and then the other four countries outside SACO. So in those five uh, nine countries, what we have been doing over the years is uh, working with uh, firms um, such as yourselves here, 
um, um, to help uh, each other to increase exports uh, from the countries, the eight countries, uh, into South Africa. Um, the reason being that South Africa is a big market and uh, also uh, uh, requires uh, raw materials as an advantage, uh, advanced economy uh, to actually uh, further process those raw materials for export uh, to other parts of the world, including the United States, which is our main focus. So we, we assist in uh, a number of ways in that. Uh, we work with firms to help um, overcome market entry requirements into South Africa. Uh, such as uh, certifications, which are, uh, can be um, private and uh, public, uh, based on private or public standards. Uh, we uh, uh, provide uh, cost share um, uh, in terms of uh, meeting the costs of uh, getting those certifications. And, and then the other aspects that will help you to uh, navigate the um, export market. Then uh, the second objective is uh, uh, helping uh, to uh, increase um, investment of capital from South Africa, as well as technology uh, out of South Africa to the eight countries we work in. And uh, this uh, capital, we're looking at uh, issues to do with uh, uh, both uh, trade finance, it can um, I mean, in terms of investment trade finance, uh, it, it can also be debt, it can be equity. So what we do is we identify um, you, um, your needs and we help to get uh, those that can actually be able to meet your needs in terms of funds for technology in South Africa and then get you to be talking so that uh, that can be addressed. Then the third objective uh, looks at uh, all the nine countries that I mentioned earlier. And uh, we, as in the case with the first objective, we assist uh, ex uh, exporters, would be exporters, to navigate um, the export um, requirements uh, between um, the region and the US. Uh, but it's, uh, it starts with uh, identifying uh, markets in the US that will be looking for the products that we produce from the region. And this particular webinar is special to us because it comes uh, in, the, in the week where uh, we have actually uh, uh, 40 companies from the region that are in the process of going to the US, some of them are already there, uh, to attend um, an event or trade show called Summer Fence food show, which is an annual event that is held in uh, in New York. And we are actually very excited that we have such a large contingent of uh, um, firms from the region that will be interacting or having an opportunity to put their products uh, in front of uh, potential buyers uh, in the US. And hopefully uh, we will get uh, very good news uh, when the uh, uh, firms that uh, have made the, the effort to, uh, to do that when they come back uh, after the event. The event is uh, going to be held on uh, uh, 12 June to 14 June, so we are quite expectant. Um, I believe there are uh, one or two firms that are from um, Mega that are also uh, part of the uh, contingent that is uh, traveled or traveling that is traveling to the US and we wish them all the best. With those words, I also like to uh, wish everyone here all the best and uh, I hope that you find this event uh, um, fruitful and worth your while and use the opportunity to interact uh, with the experts we have here and uh, after the uh, meeting, uh, I mean the event itself. Um, that with those words, uh, Madam Moderator, I would like to head back uh, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. George. That was a great uh, welcome, all protocol observed. Um, we uh, we started like a little bit five minutes off from uh, quarter past 
we started at around uh, five past three, which means that we are running a bit late. Now I am going to introduce our second, our first speaker, Mr. Andrew Holter, who is the manager for foreign trade promotion. Um, and we are very much proud to have Mr. Bulta introducing MEGA and all the services that uh, MEGA as a, as a agency um, offer to all our stakeholders, our companies and our investors. And um, over to you, Mr. Bulta. Uh, thank you, Azwi. Uh, I just need my presentation up there, please, Mamosa. Great, thank you. Um, firstly, I'd like to start by thanking uh, the USAID and the Trade Investment Hub for arranging this uh, webinar and uh, encouraging us to take part. Um, we really value um, our relationship and we hope that it carries on for quite a number of years to come. Um, the program indicated that I was going to um, introduce MEGA, but actually what I'm going to introduce today is Mpumalanga province. Um, MEGA is the official economic development agency for Mpumalanga province, and we're responsible for trade investment promotion. Um, we have a number of other uh, uh, divisions like our property division and our funding division, but today's um, presentation will specifically come from our trade investment promotion. Thanks, next slide. Um, I sense that our audience is mainly locally based, but just for um, those foreign people joining us, I just want to place Mpumalanga. Um, it's in South Africa and um, Mpumalanga in our local language, Siswati means the place from where the sun comes. So we are based in the east of South Africa, uh, bordering onto Mozambique and Swaziland. Next slide, please. Um, this indicates the Maputo Development Corridor, which is one of the primary uh, spatial development initiatives in, in, in South Africa. It was uh, initiated by our past president, um, uh, Nelson Mandela, and his counterpart in Mozambique. Um, the Maputo Corridor is basically a, a transport and development corridor that runs from Gauteng, which is um, South Africa's industrial, industrial base, through our province um, uh, into Mozambique and directly to the deep water port of, of Maputo. Next slide, please. Thank you, next one. Next, please, uh, Mamosa. That's it, yes, thank you. So to start off, I wanna just give you a little bit of an economic perspective around the province and, and, and put it in, in, in context. Um, our comparative GDP last year was 29.6 billion Rand. So if we compare that to some other markets like Mozambique, um, Honduras, for instance, which is closer to the US and Costa Rica, we are more or less equivalent in size. We appreciate that you know, the size of our provincial economies is, is quite small compared to some of our counterpart states in the USA. But in our region, we are generally quite a strong um, economic base. Next one, thank you. One of the um, beautiful things about our province is our economic diversity. Um, this pie chart, I won't go into a lot of detail, but if you just glance at it, you see the different economic sectors are probably very well represented. It's not like we just one province who only has platinum or just one product. We've got quite a diverse um, uh, economy, productive economy, with the major sectors in mining, manufacturing, and, uh, and, and trade. Next slide, please. Let me just quickly run you through the economic sectors. Uh, agriculture, although it's pretty small, um, and it accounts only for the 3% of the um, gross value add in 21, it's a very important in our province as a is a huge job creator. 
Um, our agricultural div uh, economy is divided into the high felt region and the low felt region. On the high felt region, we produce summer cereals, legumes, maize, meat, um, uh, and those type of products. The low felt region is more focused towards subtropical products like citrus fruit, nuts, and sugar cane. Um, we're one of the most productive agricultural regions in South Africa, and um, our agricultural products plays a key profile in, in South Africa's um, exports of, of fruit and nuts. Next slide. Um, within, the for, within the agricultural sector, we have a very important forestry sectors. Um, Pumalanga accounts for 40% of South Africa's uh, sustainable forests. Most of our forests have uh, uh, forestry stewardship council accreditation, so our products are, are very much exportable. We produce pulp, paper, and specialized um, cellulose, sawn timber, wood chips, and wattle. Our major players um, in this sector are SAPI, SAFCOL, Portuguese Investments and Maya Raco, PG Bison, York Timbers, and the new entrant is the FX Group. Next slide, please. Our mining sector is accounts for 20% and is the largest um, contributor to our, our provincial economy. Um, it provides employment for five more than 5% of the province's workforce. 83% of South Africa's coal production is located in, in Pumalanga and 50% of the coal reserves. Coal is the lifeblood, unfortunately, of the provincial economy, fueling 11 Eskom power stations and 80% of South Africa's current electricity is produced by coal. Coal is um, Pumalanga's largest um, export over many years. Although we do mine other products like gold, um, chrome ore uh, and platinum. Uh, we also have a number of companies that are involved in the mining services and technology industry. And this is an important subsector um, in Pumalanga. Next slide. Um, following on the mining slide, we need to talk about the green economy and the pursuing of a just transition from our low carbon economy um, to a transition into a low carbon economy without losing um, many jobs. I think out of all the sectors, this is probably showing the, the most promise in areas such as renewable energy, sustainable smart agriculture, the circular green economy, the soft infrastructure like reskilling all those current um, coal workers into jobs into the renewable energy sector, and also a hard infrastructure, the solar panels, the wind farms, all those type of things that we actually need for a just transition. Um, we are heavily engaging uh, in, in a number of, of, of markets for assistance, and there's been pledges of assistance from the US to assist um, in Pumalanga in transitioning uh, to a low carbon economy. Next slide, please. Our manufacturing sector is also extremely important, and it rests on basically three pillars. Firstly, we've got our fuel, petroleum, and chemicals products. These are mainly produced down in the south of our province with Sassel Secunda. Um, this is the world's largest synthetic fuel facility. Secondly is our ferro alloys and stainless steel industries. These are based in the in Kangala district. And companies like uh, Columbus Stainless in Middleburg is um, Africa's only producer of stainless steel flat products. Uh, Samanco Chrome or Ferrometals is the world's second largest ferrochrome producers and they have two plants in, in, in Pumalanga. The third leg of our, of our manufacturing um, sector is agro-processing. This is mainly based in the low felt region and consists of forestry products, the paper, pulp, paper and cellulose, sugar, and um, processing of subtropical um, fruit into, into fruit concentrates and our large industry uh, in the macadamia industry as well. Next slide, please. Our tourism sector is very important. Um, uh, although it only accounts for 6%, um, it's extremely important job creator. And it was quite um, uh, badly affected during the, the, the COVID, COVID pandemic. In, in, 19, in 2019, we had over a million um, uh, visitors. And in 2020, this just decreased down to 
340,000. Um, there's a, quite a number of, of important investment opportunities in, um, in the tourism sector. And uh, we look forward to a big bounce back in our tourism sector after the COVID pandemic. Next slide, please. I'd like to discuss a quickly discuss a couple of our, our um, investment projects that we're promoting. Um, in the tourism sector, we've got a five-star hotel um, at Berkslack Potholes. Um, there's a there's a cable car project um, in, in Blyder River, River, and uh, the God's Window Skywalk project is actually underway. This is similar to the Skywalk that is in the uh, Grand Canyon in the USA. It's a large bridge that goes out into the open, and we've already found investors for this project, and um, uh, it should commence shortly. Next slide. Um, Mega has been directly involved in establishing a 1.2 million rand, billion rand um, modern fresh produce market facility located in our capital city in Bombela. And this project was initiated by our, our, our previous president and the current um, uh, uh, deputy president. What we found was that although Mpumalanga was a large producer of of fruits and vegetables, it tended to all the the products tended to be shipped to Johannesburg and then redistributed from them. So we're trying to um, uh, create a access to local and regional international fresh mod uh, fresh product markets through the Mpumalanga International Fresh Produce Market. And um, it's key, it will add, be key in um, processing and distribution for Pumalanga, Swaziland, and Mozambique. Please, if you're interested in any of um, the aspects around this project, please contact us. There's still a lot of opportunities available here. The next project I want to discuss is the Nkamazi SEZ. The um, SEZ is a special economic zone. We have a, a SEZ Act, which um, allows for a certain number of incentives and, um, and discounts if the company is located within the, within the SEZ. Um, the Nkomazi Special Economic Zone is located in, in Kamati Port, which is um, on the nexus between Mozambique, Swaziland, and Pumalanga province. Um, next slide, please. This is just a bit of a, a schematic of, of what it will look like in the next one. As you can see, the red, um, the red section there is uh, indicated where the special economic zone will be located. And um, in terms of location, it's about 450 kilometers from Johannesburg. It's 100 kilometers from our capital, Mbombela. It's 100 kilometers to Maputo, and it's about 190 kilometers to to the capital of Swaziland, Bomban. So in terms of, of um, export processing and um, export manufacturing for, for distribution regionally, we really believe that our SEZ is well positioned to, to, to make a difference in our region. Next slide, please. I'd like to just maybe put a little bit of our foreign trade in perspective. Um, this is a slide of our total exports by value over the the last 10 years. You can see that our exports have, have more than more than doubled in value. It started of, of 19 billion in 2012 and um, up to 82 billion Rand in, in 2021. Although these this graph is by value and not by volume, and the Rand dollar exchange rate obviously affects us. So you know truly our our exports have been um, quite stagnant, but at least they haven't gone down. Next slide please. Top 10 products exported from Pumalanga last year were ferro alloys, stainless steel, platinum, gold, macadamia nuts. And macadamia nuts has just got into the top 10 in the last 15 years. It's a huge and growing industry. It's the largest macadamia nut industry in the world now, and that's um, number five, our, our, our fifth largest exporter. And we've had a citrus industry for, for many, many decades, and macadamia nuts is now, we're selling more macadamia nuts then we are citrus fruit. Um, our, obviously, coal is there, chromium ore, manganese, fuel wood, and uh, number 10 is citrus fruit, where we did 600 mil, 604 million rands uh, last year. Next slide, please. 
Our top um, 10 export markets in Pumalanga last year were the UAE, PR China. The USA is, is number three. Our natural trading partner, Mozambique. And then as you can see from um, our strong commodity base of export products, all the, uh, all the countries that are strong on the import of commodities are there, Japan, Korea, Netherlands, uh, Swaziland is our neighbor, Indonesia, and the United Kingdom. Next slide, please. Our exports to the United States have also um, uh, been increasing uh, throughout the past 10 years. Um, this slide is also by value, and uh, we've just doubled the value of our exports to, um, uh, to the U.S. So more than doubled our value of the exports to the U.S. in the last couple of years. Um, next slide, please. These are our top products in the USA. Um, up there, number one and number two are the big players. It's the ferro alloys and, and the platinum, um, platinum group metals. And number three is macadamia nuts. We did 742 million rands with the macadamia nuts. Manganese, stainless steel, Nitsidil Croatia fabric. Um, this is, uh, in Pumalanga doesn't have a strong um, uh, textile industry, although um, Shade, shade cloth that's for um, use in the agricultural industry and that's exported 30 million rands with that to the US last year. Uh, we've got carbides, uh, long-standing um, investment, US investment in, the, in, in Pumalanga, Rand carbide in uh, Woodbank. Um, we also export plywood and laminated woods, chromium ores. The collections, this is says collection zoological of 14 million rand, um, that is, is hunting trophies. So obviously um, a lot of Americans come and they shoot the big five in our province, um, all legally. And we've got a strong taxidermy industry based in White River. And they last year exported almost close to 15 million rands worth of, of uh, zoological collections back to the USA. Next slide. Oh, well, I hope I've made a good case of uh, for why investing in, in, in our province. Um, we've got a very diverse and resource-rich economy, and it's uh, really a, a ex most, one of the most attractive trade investment destinations in the whole of Southeast Africa. We've got a large and growing domestic market and excellent access to East Africa and the, and the Indian Ocean markets through Maputo port. Um, and we maintain that our province is an ideal location for export-driven manufacturing and production. Um, we're one of the most productive areas agriculturally, and a lot of our drive is, is to increase the exports in our agricultural sector. Our tourism sector is also really important and uh, uh, full of opportunities, and we're looking forward to further investment and in the expansion of the sector in, in, in a post-COVID world. Next slide, please. Briefly, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what we do and the services that um, the Mega Trade Promotion um, Unit offers. Firstly, we act as the Provincial Export Help Desk. So we do counseling um, uh, of, of SMEs on any export matters. We assist with things like customs duties and tariff headings, um, with the trade documentation that you might need, and advising on regional trading issues, blocks, and preferential trade agreements. We also promote the DTI's national incentives, which is the EMEA incentive scheme. Um, we the regional service provider for EMEA um, in Pumalanga. We have just um, procured a, a fantastic new research tool, which is called the DSM model, and it's from the Northwest University. And this is a research tool that can really um, assist uh, any exporters or potential exporters to narrow down their markets and identify new opportunities. We have been going through the, the redoing of our uh, national export development program with the DTIC and other provinces. It's been a long 18 months that we've been working on that and we're ready to, to launch the new global export passport program, which is a, a really a well-structured and well thought through training program for um, emerging exporters and even existing exporters who want to upskill. We host um, local trade fairs. We've um, got a number of companies that we are um, taking to Cytex next year, next next week in, in, in Gauteng. 
we do foreign trade missions um, on our own and in collaboration with other provinces and the, and the National um, Department of Trade and Industry, and uh, as well as foreign trade exhibitions. We often host inward trade missions. Um, we would organize a program for our counterparts from, for instance, Ghana or wherever, and um, it's an important part of our work. Obviously, we don't claim to be know-it-all, so uh, a large part of our assistance is referring our clients to the right people, and we do this by referring them to international trade professionals, um, industry and sector experts, our counter agencies in other countries as well as in other provinces, and any relevant government departments. Um, thank you very much. Um, I hope uh, my presentation was clear, concise, and um, made you a little bit excited about trading and investing in Pumalanga province. And please, if there are any questions, just um, uh, put it in the chat box, or I'm welcome to field them at the end of the presentations. Thank you, Aswi. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for a great um, presentation on what we have to offer. Uh, oftentimes, when we do presentation, we feel like um, we are being robbed by the uh, the so-called um, the fact that all the head offices in Johannesburg are in Gauteng, and Gauteng end up keeping that chunk um, of uh, the millions that are really uh, coming from uh, Pumalanga province. And um, thank you very much for that. Uh, our next speaker, and our time now is 15.41. We are going to hear from Ms. Um, Abigail Ellery, who is um, Ms. A Director for Africa Regional Office Enterprise, Florida, Inc. Um, her 20 years experience uh, with the company spanning from uh, 2012 has seen Ms. Abigail Ellery supporting Enterprise Florida's mission by overseeing the international trade development and foreign direct investments. Um, uh, Ms. Abigail has an honors degree from the Devon University of Technology in Management Science, credits toward a degree in the commerce and has done various leadership training. And her 20 years of market experience has resulted in strengths and in leadership, strategy, and new ideas generation, just to name a few of her expertise. And um, most of her responsibilities in, in creating new trade opportunities between Florida and African business entities, which is why it's so valuable that we hear from her today. Uh, thank you very much. The stage is yours. Thank you so much, um, Lady Asi, um, for the kind introduction. Um, I'm going to start with gratitude and hopefully end with inspiration. So thank you to USAID Trade Hub and MEGA um, for ongoing partnership and collaboration and um, for the opportunity to feature Florida in this webinar. It really is a privilege to present alongside um, your strategic partners. Um, thank you to old and hopefully new um, business friends and colleagues. Uh, we appreciate your time and interest in the state of Florida. And um, for us, this is a start of conversations that we can continue around trade and linkages um, between our markets after the webinar. Next slide, please, Mamosa. Enterprise Florida is the official economic development organization for the US state of Florida and is responsible for Florida's global branding, uh, promoting exports, facilitating inward investment, not just from US states, but um, uh, other countries as well. Uh, Enterprise Florida, also known as EFI, assists companies to set up, to locate, to expand, um, to invest and trade with Florida, um, and to and forwarding companies to export from Florida. EFR is a private uh, public partnership uh, chaired by Florida's governor, uh, but we work with a, a statewide network of partners, um, and these include local economic development organizations, government agencies, foreign consulates, sector associates, chambers of commerce, universities, 
and other uh, stakeholders. Next slide, please. In addition to uh, its elaborate uh, statewide network, um, EFI has six international trade development offices in Florida. Um, and more than that, EFI is one of the most robust um, international and, uh, and investment promotion programs with a network of 20 offices located in 13 countries. Um, and the markets include North and South America, um, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Next slide, please. We represent um, Enterprise Florida's Africa Regional Office. EFI has had an office um, on the continent since 2001, which um, is the longest track record for any US state. Um, it's close on to 21 years. I personally have been involved with the state of Florida for um, the last 10 years, so since 2012. Our mandates are twofold. It is trade promotion and under the Africa Trade Expansion Program, it is bilateral trade. We encourage and support um, two-way trade. And then with foreign direct investment, it's helping African companies who are doing really well in the continent and wish to um, increase their footprint, uh, especially into the US. We support them in setting up at least a representative office in Florida for access to uh, markets in the Americas and beyond. We, um, although we have, um, uh, I would say, the EFI headquarters in South Africa, we have trade associates and partners that cover markets all over the continent. Um, and these are listed um, in the slide, uh, roughly covering Southern Africa, East and West Africa, and Central Africa. We also work with our extensive strategic partner network, um, which I'll touch on later. Next slide, please. I'm sure that um, this is the Florida that is um, most known to um, most of us. Uh, the general of, uh, perception of Florida is that it's known for tourism, leisure, entertainment, hospitality. Um, people know it for being the sunshine state, for having beautiful beaches, the cruise industries with Port Miami being um, the cruise capital of the world, Walt Disney World, theme parks, um, amusement parks and so forth. And all of this is true. Pre-COVID, um, Florida saw around 130 million tourists to the state on an annual basis. Um, but I hope in the few minutes that I have um, to just paint a fuller picture of Florida as a trade and business destination. Um, and as we say, you know, people can come for leisure, but perhaps they will stay for business. So next slide, please, we'll start to talk business. Just to give you some context, um, aside from what is commonly known about Florida, its story also includes being a powerful economic state. Um, Florida's economy in context is that it is the fourth largest economy among US states, fourth to California, Texas, and New York. Uh, has a population of 22 million residents, and like I said earlier, close to 130 million visitors to the state per year. And it is among the, the world's top travel destinations. What is fascinating about Florida is um, if it were an independent state, it would be larger than Taiwan, Switzerland, Turkey, Argentina, and Hong Kong and various other nations. And it would rank among, um, it would rank 19th largest in terms of global economy with its GDP being close to uh, $1.3 trillion. Florida has a blend of traditional industries as well as high-tech industries, which I'll touch on just now. Uh, so again, the picture is, is far greater and wider than uh, travel, tourism, leisure, and hospitality. Next slide, please. And this is where um, Florida gets very interesting. Uh, Florida's leading economic sectors are actually what we call the high innovation industry sectors. It is a state where um, technology, creativity, and exploration seem to converge. And it is, this, this, it is a state with one of the largest exporters of high technology goods in the US. Um, some of the key industries I want to touch on is uh, that Florida's strengths lie in aviation and aerospace. And this is everything from aircrafts, parts and aerospace solutions, um, clean technologies, uh, which cover everything from environmental technologies, 
energy and sustainability solutions, including biofuels, solar, ocean energy, storage, smart grid, efficiency and environmental solutions. And then with life sciences, um, it includes biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, medical devices and equipment and healthcare. And uh, with the information technology as one of Florida's strengths, this includes modeling, um, simulation and training industries, photonics and optics, digital media, software and computing, systems design and integration, computers, microelectronics, precision, precision devices, and telecommunications. Homeland security and defense solutions include cyber security. And finally, um, Florida is really strong in its financial services and a whole host of uh, professional services. Next slide, please. This is just a quick um, graphic to show you uh, Florida's seven distinct economic regions within the state and 67 counties. Each county has its own economic development office, which is part of the network that we relate to. It's part of the network that we serve and we support. Next slide, please. Because Florida is so well known for, again, lifestyle tourism um, and travel, many people are surprised to learn that Florida is a global business hub and an international business leader. Florida is home to people and companies from all over the world with over 5 million foreign language speakers. It is known for being a business gateway into North America, South America, as well as the Caribbean basin. You find that many Latin American corporate headquarters are located in Florida. Florida is also among uh, the top 10 manufacturing states in the US. Next slide, please. In terms of Florida's international trade, Florida has very strong trading patterns between Latin America in both import and export statistics, with about one third of the total of the US trade with Latin America actually passing through Florida. Um, the international trade volumes are substantial, about 150 billion, and 60% of that is with the Americas. Um, even the service exports are substantial, uh, $50 billion. Uh, the top trading partners, again, are mostly with uh, Latin American nations, with the exception being China and Japan that feature among um, the top five. Next slide, please. Florida's key business advantages um, includes uh, being a favorable business climate, very pro-business uh, regulatory framework, political and economic stability, uh, rules-based legal system, enforceable contracts, and few restrictions on capital flows. Um, I've already touched on the state-of-the-art uh, multimodal advanced infrastructure and global connectivity. Um, it is an entrepreneurial economy. Um, Florida has high, highly competitive business costs and tax incentives, sorry, tax structures. With, uh, which includes incentives. Um, Florida has highly skilled, multicultural, multilingual uh, workforce, and lastly, um, a very attractive quality of life. Next slide, please. Uh, Florida has um, a natural and historical advantage of geographic, economic, cultural, and linguistic um, links to Latin America. Again, we see it as the gateway to South America, North America, and the Caribbean Basin, which is also reflected in the trading patterns. There are over 2,500 multinational firms located in Florida, um, and many of those are regional headquarters for Latin America, as I've mentioned earlier. Um, one other interesting fact is that Florida has the largest cluster of international banks in the US outside of New York. Next slide, please. This just demonstrates um, Florida's uh, super competitiveness relative to other states. And we look at um, states like California, Georgia, Illinois, New Jersey, South Carolina, and Texas. You'll see from this, um, uh, the Texas is quite small, but Florida ranks really high uh, with in areas like lower than norm wage rates, low unionization, highly favorable business tax, and I think everyone's favorite is the no state personal income tax, 
um, one of the biggest draw cards. Next slide, please. The um, trade, transportation and telecommunications infrastructure in Florida is significant, which will obviously you know, impact connectivity, whether you're exporting to the state um, or you're needing to move product from other states uh, via Florida to your markets. Uh, we see 20 commercial airports um, with air links um, that offer nonstop scheduled service to over 160 US and international destinations. There are um, 15 deep water ports in Florida. Two of um, the US's eight space ports are located in Florida. And then we have miles and miles of um, highway and um, freight rail that uh, offers incredible connectivity. Next slide, please. This is um, a graphic of uh, Florida's top exports and imports. So no matter your trade interests, be that exports um, out of Florida or to um, export your product to Florida. This will give you insight into the demand and supply. And we could put together a list of 50 to 100 commodities. Uh, I just chose the top 10 just for ease of visibility. Um, you will see that some of Florida's key exports are in aviation, life science sectors, ICT and automotive. And um, some of Florida's key imports are in automotive, metals, minerals and mining um, and again in with Florida's top export markets and import markets um, the pattern is mostly with South American markets with the exception being um, China and Japan. South Africa and um, other African nations are, are yet to be on even the top 50 on the map but we're hoping to to change um, that data with more of these webinars. Next slide please. Now that I've given you a snapshot of Florida as a business and trade destination, um, this is just a summary of what we as Enterprise Florida Africa Regional Office can offer to African-based clients to support um, in your interest. And it's a full spectrum of uh, trades and business and government linkages, um, uh, whether it's business, governments, industry association, chambers of commerce, R&D institutions, educational institutions, we get involved in those kind of linkages. We facilitate a sister city agreements, um, port to port um, working agreements, business to business and government to government links. We have supported trade missions going to Florida from the African continent and, and the reverse, Florida companies coming to our markets. Um, we are involved in live and virtual um, webinars like we're doing today. And for those interested in some kind of representative office in Florida, in addition to what is already established in this market, we will come alongside um, to support with everything from state and city information, site information, um, incentives, permitting, and regulatory assistance, and just a whole host of um, value added services. Next slide, please. I have touched on some of Enterprise Florida's state partners. It really is a really wide web network. It's the county offices, it's Florida Department of Economic Development, um, Visit Florida, which is the tourism agency of um, the state of Florida, and uh, it's various industry associations, chambers, um, as well as you know agencies like uh, Workforce Florida. Next slide, please. Thanks, Mimosa. Next slide, please. Um, okay, we've skipped one, but that's okay. Um, we just, this, there we go. Enterprise Florida, um, Africa Strategic Partners. Uh, again, a really extensive network all over the continent. Uh, we work with our um, US government partners. US Aid Trade Hub is just one. We work with all of the embassies, the consulates, uh, US Trade and Development Agency, um, and so forth and so on. We work with national government, provincial and city government, economic development, uh, trade and investment partners, uh, with all of your um, exporter clubs, uh, industry associations, um, and chambers, and so forth. Um, and this just helps us uh, provide the best service possible for both um, Florida as well as African prospects. Next slide, please. These next two slides 
is just a, a, a visual of some of the foreign owned companies in Florida. And it really is, is quite a mix. On this slide, you see, um, you know, companies that are in aviation, life science, um, bank, banking and finance, telecom, even food franchises. And in our next slide, um, it's, yeah, ICT, automotive, research and development, electronics. Um, it's actually any industry um, thrives in Florida because of the, the just the multifaceted um, business friendliness of the state. Next slide, please. This is our very small but fabulous EFI Africa team. And I know what you all are wondering, yes, when we are not doing trade and investment promotion, we are international trade models also. Um, next slide, please. Lastly, um, I said I would start with gratitude and end with inspiration. Um, in our world of dramas and uncertainties and loss, um, we continue to do what we know to do, uh, and uh, we have to persevere in the things we know which for us is to support as many linkages and connections around trade and foreign direct investment. So we just want to encourage you, whether you're new to export or a seasoned exporter, um, it is businesses with a positive, overcoming, creative mindset that will reap the reward and benefits of doing business uh, internationally. Um, so as Nelson Mandela said, it's always it always seems impossible until it's done. And I hope our hope is that you reach out to us to see what is possible um, as regards your state, your interest in the state of Florida. So thank you so much um, for your time and um, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. Hi, thank you very much, Ms. Abigail Ellery. Yes, indeed, you started with gratitude and we are inspired. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for your patience. I want to state that we are running a little bit um, late, we will need that 30 minutes that I've spoken about when we started. I am also um, encouraging all of us to use the chat box for questions. And if there's anything that we need to say, let's let's put it there. That will also help during our question and answer session. Um, as we move along, we are going to hear from Paul Fenter, who is the managing partner of OnDeck. CPG Inc. Um, without any waste of time, I'm going to allow Mr. Fenter to present to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Azri. Listen, it, it, it's a privilege to connect to you guys. Um, and you can please move on to the to, to the presentation so long. And I'm 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 going to take the liberty to deviate a little bit from the presentation because. After listening to what Andrew said, and obviously lovely always listening to, to what Abigail says, is that um, Mpumalanga is a unique opportunity. And um, love the province, love the people. Um, and it's really nice to hear my, my last name being pronounced as Venter, because here in the US it's, it's pronounced as Venter. Um, and I still don't get used to it, but getting right into it, um, if you can move one slide along. Um, <clears throat> Background story here about on deck is that I mean we're South African born entrepreneurs uh, moved to the US and we really started to build our own brands based on Southern African ingredients here in the US. As we continue to grow, we license more brands um, and we increased our portfolio through everything Southern Africa um, and trying to connect you into trade with the US. Um, but over time, we've become more known as a route to market platform because really the capabilities that we've built is the ability to connect um, Africa and the US in, in, in trade. So what we um, try to offer to an audience like this is just a little bit of personal entrepreneurial, more operational type of experience. What does it take in order to um, solve this pain? Because the market and the supply um, are in two different places. You guys are in in South Africa um, <clears throat> and there's valuable commodities here. The US needs it and how do we physically go about solving the problem of getting it here? Now that problem is a multifaceted problem statement. It's not just about knowing an importer or not just about shipping a container. It's really about creating an ecosystem 
central command in another market where you can um, take control over everything from sales, logistics, um, marketing, even sometimes part of the supply chain management, order management, back office, and all the rest. So um, at on deck, we've we've now instead of just operating our own brands, we've opened our our, our platform in order to facilitate um, trade from South Africa or Southern Africa into the U.S. We're we're headquartered in in South Lake in Dallas area um, in Texas. That's why I, I I speak with a little bit of a funny um, Texas accent, but. Um, I, I can just affirm what what Abigail also said about Florida. A fantastic state. If you want to choose one state, or maybe two states to trade with, um, starting out, Florida and Texas are certainly booming and, and and great candidates to start off with. So, if you move my, one slide along, um, a, a little bit of background context just about our firm here. Um, we're part of the Mergon group of companies, but headquartered in. in in um, Stellenbosch in South Africa. So the goal that we set out to do is to uh, simplify or demystify <clears throat> what it takes to trade internationally <clears throat> or to trade with the US. Um, but from a timing perspective, there's a couple of things that I want to point out. Firstly, um, because of COVID and things that are happening in the US and, 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 and uh, internationally, the the U.S. has become much more expensive to operate within, but um, other places have become much more efficient, like Southern Africa. Now, the opportunity sits within that difference. Um, the U.S. needs trade partners that are solid, and seeing the global supply chains are shifting in the U.S., um, I can tell you that U.S. buyers are buying less from China and even from Russia at the moment. Um, it's not about trade war type of things. It's more about labor practices and, and, and food safety issues. So when you talk about uh, an opportunity, and, I, and, and I'm pretty confident that the numbers that Andrew showed uh, about the, the increase in, in, um, in, in trade with, with the U.S. and international exports from Mpumalanga, that this had an influence in that. Um, well, as, as the U.S. buyers are buying less from a place like China, they need alternatives. And South Africa is a phenomenal alternative to fill that gap. I can tell you from personal experience that macadamia certainly is one of those things that you guys are disproportionately um, positioned well at um, in order to make use of. I mean, we're excited about macadamia rollouts currently with, for example, um, uh, CVS. Uh, so we should get confirmation with, uh, on the 26th of June, which keeping our fingers crossed and praying for that. But um, CVS is a, is a, is a uh, retail chain with 16,000 or close to 16,000 retail outlets in the US. So it's a massive footprint. And um, we're rolling out the macadamia SKUs there uh, between four and eight macadamia SKUs, which is massively exciting. Um, then at the same time uh, with, with, with Sprouts as well and a number of other retail uh, major retailers here in the US. So, um, but it, it, a quick quick part of our context here also um, as part of our group is that we've recently launched a um, an investment fund, which is an Africa-focused um, uh, consumer goods, supply chain, and agri-focused fund um, because the U.S. really realizes um, the importance of Africa trade. Um, so we're excited that capital is available, that the time in the market in order to really um, position ourselves for trading with the U.S. is, is good at this point in time. So if you can move forward a little bit to the next slide. All right, so personally speaking, um, as pieces of advice from entrepreneurs that have really learned a couple of uh, important lessons in trying to connect the trade like we do, um, I think the very important thing to focus on is to simplify your supply chain. Um, part of what we see is that uh, too many importers or too many third party international traders comes into Africa and buys as cheaply as possible as they can, essentially making the farmers and the suppliers price takers in their own market, uh, which means very little of the value chain really sits with the ultimate with this original source. 
So our recommendation when you trade with the US, go direct. Um, keep your supply chain trim. Try to avoid intermediaries like distributors or um, importers as far as you can. Try to do it yourself so that the value that you create ultimately um, sits with you. And, and to that point, uh, just to make sure on deck, our, our um, business has been set up in order to facilitate that. We're not set up as a third party importer or a, or a distributor. We can do that in some unique cases, but it's really about connecting trade as directly as possible from the source to the ultimate retail partner or to the customer on the side. The, the second piece of advice that I want to point out there is that um, plan for the long term. In order to win in a market like the US, um, we see too many companies going at it, just trying one small thing, see if they can win. This is not how the US market works. Um, sure, there could be one Hail Mary win here and there, but that's unique. If you plan to enter this market, plan for a marathon, not for a sprint. Um, plan to rather start small and then grow as you see success. But the reality is that you have to be in this market to win in this market. So plan for a long, um, uh, longer budget cycles than what uh, you would typically plan for. This is a very competitive space, but it is absolutely worth it. So third point of there um, that I'll point out is that as you as you trade with the US is that please remember trust relationships. Um, I can tell you that from personal experience working with many companies entering the US market from Southern Africa um, is that there is too little emphasis being placed on building long term trust relationships. Um, because of the competitive nature of this market, uh, there's a lot of options for suppliers and for retailers, etc. They can choose whomever they want to. Prices are usually competitive, quality is usually good. But the reality is that they go where they have trust relationships. So please remember to focus on relationships. Please remember to build trust over time. Um, and then just a couple of other things that I'll point out. I'm, I'm going to skip this slide um, and we can go to the next one. Uh, just to make it simple for everybody to understand. What OnDeck does is that we help facilitate um, your company in a new market like this under these um, topics that you see here. Um, I can tell you that the way that you can think about OnDeck is as a, as a central command in another place. Um, we put resources to work um, on your behalf. The way that we go about it is that instead of you having to appoint all the resources yourself and make them work together, we can um, activate a cost share model where essentially you pay a fraction of the cost in order to enter a new market. And then thereafter is that we only make money um, when uh, the success happens. So we, we put ourselves into a place where we live off of performance alongside of um, the manufacturers and partners that we work with out of South Africa. So obviously the first category that's everybody um, uh, is really important is actually who does the sales. There's the selling job to the retail partners or to the um, accounts on this side. Um, we put resources to work on that. Second thing is that we have a logistics and a warehousing and infrastructure to, to, to make sure that the products can move. Thirdly is that we help with certain parts of the supply chain. We do not do manufacturing ourselves. We don't have a manufacturing facility ourselves, but we manage third party manufacturing um, outlets in the US as co-packers or as um, printing facilities, et cetera, to, to help bring part of the supply chain here. Um, and then things like marketing, back office, which is order management, accounting, um, and, and all of the administrative tasks, et cetera. Um, but there's more that we can help with, but I, I hope you get a sense that um, central command in a different place, that's that's what you can think about on deck as. If you can skip the, to the next slide, um, uh, it's important to understand is that um, we do not do everything internally ourselves as a company. Um, we also lean into best of breed third parties here in the US. Um, there are certain things, for example, in the in the food business, you will have to work um, when you go to the retail channels, you have to work with, with companies like Kahi and Unify, um, which are um, distributors that, that really take the product from a warehouse into, into the uh, retail partners. 
those are inevitables um, and we help you administer those as well. So I hope this gives you a quick insight, but um, I'm highly encouraged about connecting with everybody uh, in, in places like Mpumalanga, considering the fact that we believe Africa is rising. I mean, the tide is um, certainly in the favor of Africa being a very important growth um, market, globally speaking, not only from investment, but, but also for what Africa has to offer. Um, so thank you for being good stewards and um, love to connect with people if they if they're interested in order to attack this. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fenter. I'm stressing the Fenter so you can enjoy it more. <laughs> yes, uh, Africa is rising and it is with our partners like you that we feel encouraged that um, as, as uh, companies in Pumalanga, we are ready and geared and will get much help. Um, let's proceed with our program. And I would like to welcome Mr. Warwick Lamy, who is the group CEO, African Trade Platform, Subvest Capital. Um, thank you, Mr. Warwick. You may take the stage. Thanks for showing how are you? I am great. Good. Uh, can everyone see my screen as I'm sharing? Yes. Perfect. Eh? I, I believe we all can. Thank you. So, thanks very much. Eh? Uh, thanks, George, Andrew, Abigail, and Paul. Um, it, I'd like to just start off. Um, it, uh, my name is Warwick Blamey. Um, it, I'm the CEO of African Trade Platform. Um, it's, it, it, ATP um, is the abbreviation that's, uh, that we, we know known for in the markets. Um, it, we, we are a hub for, for African trade. Um, the platform uh, from our side we've partnered with uh, USA and Southern Africa Trade and Investment Hub, um, who have been running a, a program to, to increase um, trade with uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and the, the rest of the world. Eh? Um, the ATP platform, um, it, it utilizes um, algorithms to, to link buyers and sellers of, of various products. Um, it's, it's, so if you, you're a buyer um, looking for products, if you're sitting in the USA and you're looking to, to acquire products from Sub-Saharan Africa, um, it's, or you, if you're a seller, and you, you're looking to, to integrate products into to the rest of the world. Um, the, the platform is is a perfect place to um, to start that process. Um, but, uh, what do we do? Uh, it's, uh, if you think of four pillars to, to every transaction, um, you'd have buyers, sellers, um, your logistics, which forms a, a major part of, of any any uh, trade, um, as well as the financial um, aspects. Um, our platform links all four um, aspects into to one structure. Um, it, uh, you can have a, a buyer in the US and a seller um, sitting in Mpumalanga, uh, but it's, it does not mean that a transaction will uh, will happen. Um, it, that if you think of 10 steps in any transaction, linking buyers and sellers is, is probably step uh, step one. Um, and there's still nine other steps that's, um, that need to take place, uh, right from, from the logistics um, to getting the correct financial structures in place um, to, to enable the transaction to happen. Uh, so if any one of the four pillars falls apart, um, the trans probability of the transaction going through um, are, are close to zero. Um, ATP uh, bring all aspects into to one platform and manage all the, the back end um, uh, structures that, uh, that need to take place to, to enable the, the transaction. Um, it's uh, just a few trepidations. If you're a buyer um, sitting in the, in the US, for an example, um, how do I find sellers? Um, it's, it's, um, is the supplier genuine? Um, it, uh, it's a couple thousand kilometers away. Uh, you've got no idea what's happening on the ground, but you, you're on the market to acquire certain products. How do you know they're real um, products? How do you know the product is real? Um, is it a scam, not a scam? Um, how do I know that uh, the product that I'm actually acquiring um, it's, it is the correct product? So let's take um, macadamias, for an example, which um, uh, we export quite a uh, quite a, a decent quantity from Mpumalanga um, through our platform. Uh, you may have a buyer sitting in the US. How does he know that the style zero is a style zero? That the product, the 
quality is is correct, um, where the packaging is is correct, vacuum packing, etc. Um, uh, how do they they know that uh, what they getting told they they buying is um, is in fact the correct product? So um, African Trade Platform number one would verify um, the the seller of of that uh, product. In the case of macadamias, it would generally be a processor because you have to be HACCP uh, BRC uh, registered dependent on the buyer's specifications. So that product would then need to, to be verified um, and um, samples checked, inspections of, of the samples before that, so that product gets um, gets exported. On the, um, the supply side, how do the um, sellers know that, um, that uh, they're dealing with a, a genuine buyer? How do they know that they're going to get paid for that, um, that product? How do they know that uh, once a product is, uh, has been shipped, that, um, that the funds are going to flow on a timely basis? Um, and that's where uh, African Trade Platform once again um, steps in um, it, as the, you could say, trusted advisor between the buyer and seller, uh, where the whole financial aspect of the transaction is, is handled uh, by the team, uh, which is generally run through our um, escrow structure, um, it, uh, which is, has been put in place. <laughs> Um, so that's uh, a few of uh, the practical um, uh, steps that that we take from from our side to to enable transactions to to happen. Um, the platform is for for everyone. Uh, we do run centralized depots. Um, a pure example is once again, if you look at uh, the nuts from uh, an Mpumalanga side, um, we have our sister company and within our group called uh, Nutcracker, where uh, where product that runs through the platform is, is actually delivered to our our depot down. In, in KZN, uh, which is then uh, centralizes um, and aggregates the product before it gets exported to, to the USA. Um, so those are, are a few of the, the benefits that, uh, that we have on, on our side. Uh, due diligence, this is extremely important. Um, it, uh, I mentioned earlier, if you're a buyer sitting a couple of thousand kilometers across the world, how do you know that the seller is, is genuine, is real? Um, Product quality specifications are, are correct. Um, uh, that's uh, something that uh, our, our team at ATP will all verify and assist the buyer with. And on the flip side, how do we know that the um, uh, from a seller's perspective that the buyer is actually actually real? Um, and, and the buyer, if anyone coming onto our platform is to go through a, a due diligence process where verifications are done to to make sure that um, the buyers are real and that they've got the capacity to actually run through through the transaction. Um, it's fees, it's often a question that's asked, our fees range from 1% to, uh, to 6%. Um, so if we uh, talk about, uh, uh, I know Andrew mentioned a few products earlier. So if you're looking at, at coal, for an example, there, it's uh, generally it's larger transactions that would come down to around 1%. Um, but if you're looking at, at nuts and, and lower volumes, our value products, um, you, you're looking at around 6%. Um, our, our fees are only taken from a success basis uh, once a transaction actually takes place. Um, but from a, an onboarding perspective, you've got uh, three levels uh, from just a pure uh, viewing member uh, to a registered member. Um, and, and to in, in order to be able to transact and go through a, a transaction, you'd have to be a verified member um, on the platform. Uh, it's our rewards program, which is uh, introduced uh, last year, uh, rates various participants on the platform, which then um, it allows um, new uh, transactors to to get an idea of the of the rating. The higher the rating, um, which we are now finding, um, the the more business uh, participants are, are willing to do with that specific uh, trade or transactor. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, that's us in a in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you very much from ATP. I am sure a lot of our companies that are um, listening are very much pleased to hear about you know, some of those um, uh, plans that are in place to ensure that um, they are not scammed and, and stuff like that, because international trade also has that. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we would like to hear from our last uh, presenter, Mr. Greenblatt. Mr. Greenblatt is the president of Albert Scott e-commerce management. Um, thank you, Mr. Greenblatt. 
you may go ahead and present. All right, thank you so much for uh, having me here. I'll be quite brief because um, uh, we are running a bunch of late and frankly, I don't have a ton to say, but I would like to talk about uh, Amazon and particularly building, uh, you know, with the opportunity of amazon.com for uh, brands in your region in the United States. So when we talk about e-commerce here, I'm gonna jump into my presentation. Um, let's screen share here, all righty, and share, and we're good to go. Um, all right. Yes. It, we're good? Shared. Thank you, we're good. Awesome. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about amazon.com, which is the largest e-commerce platform in the United States by a long shot. Uh, e-commerce in general, when we talk about selling online, uh, we're talking about Amazon. Now in this presentation, um, before I go further, I just want to talk a little bit about my firm. Uh, we have, I have a firm called Albert Scott. Today we manage a lot of clients, mostly based in the United States. These are brands that need support on Amazon and we support them in every way on Amazon from their marketing to their product listing, to their logistics, to, uh, you know, any different piece of Amazon that needs support. Um, and we've built, uh, we've launched many brands on Amazon. We've built a lot of revenue on Amazon for many brands in almost every product category from clothing to grocery, to vitamins, to food, to snacks, to um, backpacks, to electronics. So we have experience almost in all of it. Uh, and we've built this e-commerce management firm. We've one of the first people to call it e-commerce management. Uh, and the idea behind it is, is that at managing Amazon is different uh, managing e-commerce is different than any brand, uh, anything that brands are used to. So today our clients are mostly U.S.-based clients, but we work with probably 50 or more than that, probably at this point, 70 international brands, uh, many of which came to us through the Trade Hub. Uh, and uh, today we are on our 40, we are launching our 45th brand uh, out of the uh, Southern Africa region. So we definitely have extensive um, you know, experience with launching brands in different spaces there. We've launched everything from grocery brands out to uh, leather wallet brands. All right, jumping to it. Now, the mean, the, this is a top level overview. We're going to stay out of the details here because uh, during this presentation, I hope to persuade you about the opportunity of what Amazon is for uh, you know, you, for young brands or brands that are not established in the US market. Um, I would like to kind of give over the impression that, in fact, the United States, uh, Amazon has revolutionized commerce in the United States and left opportunity for brands to take market share. Now, to understand that, there's really two pieces of Amazon that one has to understand to recognize where the opportunity lies. Uh, the first is the introduction of a search term. Um, now, what that means is, is that Amazon uh, is different than all the than a brick and mortar store in the United States. So fundamentally, if you go to a shopping in an actual store, uh, you have your you know a cart, you push it down the aisle, and you can see all the different items there. You choose which items you want, you buy it, and you check out, and that's how traditional brick and mortar uh, shopping has been you know for the last uh, long time. What e-commerce and Amazon and the internet has opened up is, is instead of actually walking down aisles, you you just search a search. So you may walk down the deodorant aisle or you may on Amazon search for the word deodorant. Both of them are basically the same. You have a list of products there, you choose one, you add it to cart, you buy it. Now the fundamental difference though is, is that the largest brick and mortar store in the United States, which is Walmart, at best will carry about 120,000 different items in their store with this is obviously a very large store and you can pick one of 120,000 items. On Amazon, you can pick one of 400 million items. Uh, so the first, the beginning difference is that the shelf on Amazon is far greater than the shelf on a brick and mortar store will ever be. Uh, but more importantly than just that you can, ha you have access to more items, uh, is the uh, this first difference between uh, walking down an actual physical aisle and a search term. And what I mean by that is, is that if you had a particular item uh, let's say you had a type of, you know, a deodorant made with lavender, all right? And if you had a deodorant made with lavender, it's possible that in a brick and mortar store where they only carry, you know, 10 different deodorants, you would have to prove to the buyers of those brick and mortar retailers, if you hope to sell there, why your lavender deodorant is going to outsell one of their deodorants there. 
Now, they're going to tell you that the lavender deodorant market is just not large enough to outsell the regular generic uh, deodorants. Now, on Amazon, you have to understand there's not just a deodorant aisle, which is the search deodorant, but there's, in fact, a search for lavender deodorant or herbal deodorants. And therefore, what ends up ap- happening is, is that there are not just millions of more items, but in fact, millions of more aisles. And with that, as what we call is the growth of the midsize brand. And what we mean by that is, is that you're, you have the ability on Amazon.com to launch product that never would have the market share to necessarily take uh, place on a large Walmart aisle to outsell one of the other 10, uh, you know, deodorants because your specific niche deodorant simply can't outperform the previous ones. But within Amazon, because of the introduction of search terms instead of aisles, there's going to be hundreds of searches around the deodorant space. And what you have to actually do is outsell products on specific searches, focusing on your uh, features. So if you have a natural deodorant, you can outsell, you may not be able to outsell products on the search deodorant, but you can outsell products on the search uh, you know, natural deodorant. So now you can start doing, you know, potentially not, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars, a few million dollars in sales. You know, if you would be in a Walmart, you would be selling $50 million. But now on Amazon, you have the ability to kind of take a market share because of the super specified search terms, which have replaced the brick and mortar aisles. So that's the first piece of uh, information that you have to really know about the opportunity for uh, Amazon.com, particularly for brands uh, trying to gain market share and launch in the United States. The second one is um, the how it works with uh, sales. All right, when it comes to brick and mortar sales, so you have to convince a buyer of a brick and mortar store why your product is going to outperform. He's going to want to see data. He's going to want to see marketing spend. And the only way he's going to take uh, one of his deodorants off the shelf and put your deodorant on the shelf. Uh, is if he in fact sees that for some reason you are going to outsell this deodorant, which potentially has been selling in the store for 30, 40, 50 years. Aside from that, you have the buyer relationship itself. He may know the, the he may know the sales guy at that old deodorant brand for 50 years, and it becomes extremely hard to unseat product when it comes to getting into brick and mortar. Well, on Amazon, there is no relationship-based buying. And what I mean by that is, what determines how much you sell on Amazon is a very small, simple fact. If people visit your page, they hit the add to cart button and they check out, then you get a sale. If they do not visit your page and do that process of adding to cart and checking out, you don't get a sale, which opens up that it's no longer a question of, you know, old relationships, but rather a question of, can I persuade a customer when they visit my page to buy my product? Uh, And it becomes about your display of your product and your product itself over the relationships that the legacy brands have been built on. Uh, And of course, this is a second prong to why it's a massive opportunity to launch in the United States, particularly through Amazon.com, in order to gain market share quickly. Um, This is not just a question when it comes to small brands. We work with large brands all over the world uh, that when it comes to the first uh, you know, when a for their, you know, their introduction to market, they choose Amazon as the first place for introducing the product to the market because of the fact that you can start uh, gaining market share quickly uh, and start building data about your product and building customers around your product prior to this relationship game of trying to convince buyers why your product should unseat another product. Now, that's the give you an overview of why this is the birth of the mid-sized brand in the United States a massive opportunity for brands based outside the United States to introduce their products and gain market share uh, in a quick way. Um, Now, just understanding what Amazon is uh, built around, this is how my company is divided into three divisions. Uh, The three divisions are retail, marketing, and listings. So this is just a little bit more, again, we're gonna stay out of the weeds, uh, but as a top level, you know, regardless of whether or not you use my agency, these are really the three divisions of Amazon uh, and if you want to understand how to perform well on Amazon, it means that you're doing well in these three divisions. What are the three divisions? You've got retail, marketing, and listings. So just to understand what retail marketing listings are, retail means what this, everything that has to do with the sale of the product. What's my retail price? How much inventory should I ship to Amazon? Did I prepare my goods for Amazon? Um, do I managing my seller account properly? Am I you know, handling all the buyer messages and responding quickly? 
Retail means everything that has to do with the sale of the product on Amazon. Listing management is the design of the product page, which is extremely important uh, because on a, uh, unlike a regular brick and mortar store that we're used to, people can't pick up your product, feel how heavy it is, check out the, check out the product packaging. None of that's really possible online or, or on Amazon. So you have to convince a customer through your product page that in fact you have a great product. And based on how well you convince customers on your product page, that will be directly correlate to exactly how many products you sell. Uh, simply because if the customer visits your page and says, hey, I think I found a better one, then you won't make the sale. If the customer visits your page and says, wow, what a great product, they connect to your product, they like your branding, you connected them with your brand, you connect them with your product features, and I'll show a product or two at the end of this so you can kind of understand what that means then you can in fact generate revenue uh, by um, you know, having a very strong product presentation. And that's a separate division of my firm solely focused around listing design. And the final piece is marketing. Marketing on Amazon to understand what that means, it means to say it's getting on the, putting your, paying money to be on the aisles of Amazon so that Amazon learns from the data that you feed it and then puts it on the aisle themselves. And here's what that means. So if you let's say have an herbal deodorant, all right? Now, Amazon probably has at this point 5,000 deodorant, different deodorant brands on Amazon. So you want to see, you know, you know that you have a lavender deodorant and the first place you want to push your product is that when people search lavender deodorant, you think you have the best product in the lavender deodorant space. So you actually pay Amazon to be a sponsored product on top of a search, uh, the search lavender deodorant. Amazon places you on top of that search and you pay Amazon every time somebody clicks on that particular product, you say, hey, Amazon, I'll give you a dollar if somebody clicks on my product. And if Amazon sees that people, in fact, click on your product uh, at a pretty, you know, and, and, and pretty commonly and then go and buy the product, they say, hey, this guy's got a great lavender deodorant. And even when you're not sponsoring it on top of that search, even when you're not paying Amazon to be on the lavender deodorant search, Amazon will anyway put your product there as a as an organic search result as it's called basically uh, amazon saying this product will convert this product will sell on the search lavender deodorant and therefore even when you stop paying amazon for marketing you still have people discovering your product that search lavender deodorant because you're one of the products that show up when people search such a search that's called amazon marketing that's a separate division of my firm and of course there's hundreds thousands sometimes tens of thousands of searches that can relate to a product and of course um, managing that, employing marketing spend in the best way possible, uh, that's the third division and uh, what we've handled for our clients. Now, we've launched um, you know, many brands on Amazon and particularly for new brands that we've launching out from internationally, here's just a quick kind of step-by-step -step process to make it real uh, and how quick it is that you can actually get products live and launched on Amazon. The first step is simply creating a financial model. What that means is if let's say I have my deodorant, I'm going to sell it, let's say in a two pack or a three pack, and I have to choose a retail price to choose that retail price. You have to kind of work out the fees that are pulled from your price, from your product. So let's say you want to sell your three pack for 15 us dollar, then you're going to sell it for $15. You have to understand Amazon's going to take $3 and 40 cents to ship the product. You're going to have to ship to the United States, which might be another dollar an item. You're going to have to pay an Amazon referral fee, a commission for another $2. And you'll see that you're only left with $7. That may be profitable for you, or it may not be profitable for you. So you may say, you know what, I'm going to come back with a three pack at $18, where I make $10. And that's, in fact, a good price. It's called a financial model. It models out exactly what happens through the financial transactions when you from your all the way from your retail offering price down to what you can receive in order to choose a retail price that makes sense a of course that you're profitable and in fact b that it makes sense on the market the second one is creating an effective marketing campaign which means what are we going to invest into this product where is it going to go and what's it going to do so in the herbal deodorant case i'm going to spend 300 dollars on the lavender uh, uh deodorant search 1500 dollars on the natural deodorant search and $5,000 on the deodorant search. These are marketing campaigns directed towards pushing product within niches of a particular market. The third is, of course, we need to receive products and prepare it for Amazon fulfillment centers. Amazon fulfillment centers accept the product and then ship it once the orders are placed on Amazon. Uh, but you do have some regulation for what Amazon uh, accepts in their fulfillment centers. So we have warehouses out in uh, the United States which accept the goods, uh, prepare it for Amazon, deliver it to Amazon fulfillment centers. The fourth 
case would be research the best terms in Amazon, which means when you create your product pages, you have to understand exactly how are people going to get there. They're going to get through the search lavender deodorant. They're going to get through the search herbal deodorant. They're going to get through the search deodorant for women. These are potential all different searches. We need to research all of them and put them into our product page uh, and into our graphics to make sure that when customers come through those searches, we in fact convince them to buy the product. And of course, then you have to create the high grade product page in Amazon. Uh, and once we create that high grade product page on Amazon, we must execute the marketing program to make sure that in fact, uh, products are found first as a sponsorship and then organically, even without sponsorship on the platform. Uh, here's an example uh, where we've launched a uh, golden goodness, which is a food brand. Uh, they've did, you know, over the first year, they've sold more than $50,000 worth of goods on Amazon with under $5,000 of marketing, uh, a brand based out of Zambia. Uh, and the reason why they sold so well was they had a product, as you can see, that reviewed very well. The product customers liked the packaging. It was, in fact, nicer than some of the mass market product that was out there in the space. It had a very solid price point, uh, you know, per how much, you know, people were buying. And... The fact was that on the searches, which in this case would have been, you know, synthetic meat or vegan meat or texture vegetable protein or TVP, all of these searches, the product outperformed and got indexing. And therefore, with only a few thousand dollars of marketing, they sold over $50,000 worth of goods. Uh, as you can see here, these are just the sales from, you know, within the last year or so. Uh, before I leave, though, I want to show kind of a product page on Amazon, uh, if possible just to kind of show you what it means as far as a listing design uh, and all of that. So uh, take a product like, um, this is a salt product based out of South Africa. You may see it local there that we've launched in the United States. It's a brand new launch, all right? So here at this point on the title and short description of my listing team designed all of the text and short description to have all the searches. So gourmet sea salt, smoked salt, uh, smoke, you know, desert salt, natural salt, all of this is integrated into the title. And then again, the short description to make sure that Amazon understands what this product is and can start offering it on different searches. Besides for that, we obviously designed the product listing. This is designed by my listing team to in fact, can persuade a customer to, to buy the product. All right, first talking about how it's great for chefs and it's cold smoked. The second one talks about the salt itself, of course, and that it's a desert salt. Um, the third is talks about obviously product features saying, hey, this is pure, unrefined, it's natural, it's mineral rich. Then you, we talk about the grinder itself saying it's, it comes with a grinder and all of that. Then we have a customer testimonial saying, hey, this is absolutely amazing. And finally, a brand story graphic really convincing the customer uh, you know, to connect them with the brand shows them kind of, you know, who's making this. It's a real brand. These are real people with a real mission and all of that. And of course, once you visit this page, it's with this kind of conversion that generates sales for, uh, for the brand. And uh, we hope to launch many brands out of your region. Today, we're working with uh, obviously the trade hub, but aside from the trade hub, many government organizations that are involved in increasing commerce, particularly in the United States, when it comes to, for example, any organization that will bring uh, brands to a trade show would be an organization we would work with for help support on launching brands on Amazon, the support that the uh, hubs are able to give us and the, uh, and the business side of the, uh, and the business or government organizations uh, is the financial and capital support as well as the guidance for brands uh, to make sure that they have what they need to launch in the United States. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you for your, uh, your time. And uh, I hope uh, everything was clear there. All righty. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was that was very clear. And it's like a ding ding light because uh, a lot of our companies that we work with in our mandate, it's mostly with SMMEs. And it is mostly from these companies that there's a lot of niche market, new introduction or introduction of new products. And I'm sure for those who are in, on this platform today, it's like, wow, it's possible. That which they were doing on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, all those you know, uh, pictures trying to indulge clients, it's possible for them to do it with a company like yours and get more market share. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we are, um, we literally maybe only having 15 minutes to go to our question and um, answers 
and I'm going to take this opportunity to allow all of us who have questions to please um, raise your hand. And um, I think Mamusa will also be helping me with that because I can't see most of the names. I can see there's a hand raised. Um, OK, let me I'm going to mute. Mamusa. Hello. OK. Yes, um, I, yes, yes, I can hear you. I think I am unable to scroll and see whose name is, whose hand is up. Are you able to help me with that? Um, Doreen, yes. can you assist, please? Yes, Lady uh, Azri, it's Andrew that's got his hand up. Sure, thanks, Andrew. Uh, hi, Azri, thanks. Uh, I've got a, uh, a quick question. Um, it's a bit of a technical thing, but I want to direct it at um, Paul and, and Warwick. Um, I'm not going to let them get away without picking their brains on this issue. Um, you know, there's, a, there's, there's been a lot of these survivor um, a reality show TV programs coming out of the US, like uh, Alone, Survivor, Naked and Afraid, Bear, Bear Grylls, and, and, and for instance. And what I've noticed is, they, is that they've started to term uh, dried meat or the American term jerky as biltong. So my question is, is biltong a growing product? Is it a, is it a name that's starting to be recognized in the US? And um, because it's essentially just dried meat, is it a bit of a nightmare to get through FDA and, and, and the whole process? Thanks. Okay, perfect. Um, um, Warwick, do you want to field this, or do you want me to go? No, I, I, I think you you jump in there, Paul. Okay, um, Andrew. Yeah, no. I mean, we all know that bulldog's better than jerky, right? Um, so, and, and that's a joke, but it's also not. I think with the keto movement, that what we're seeing at the moment. Remember, jerky is smoked meat, smoked meat, and sometimes um, there's it contains high levels of sugar. Um, so we see keto and paleo movements leaning towards Biltong. Um, yes, FDA was quite a, um, a process to make sure that the, um, that the, the, the way Biltong is being dried and, and, and cured ultimately uh, adheres to the standards, especially when it comes to packaged goods sold in, in stores. So brands like Strive is doing a pretty good job here in the US uh, making that mainstream. Um, there's multiple Biltong brands. Um, and uh, you may be aware of Stormberg Foods is also one of the bigger um, building manufacturers in South Africa, now headquartered in North Carolina as well, doing a pretty good job of making sure that building becomes a little bit more mainstream. Um, it, it is, uh, it's obviously a new thing to, to sell into this market and you're, you're up against a cultural um, big deal. So to, to say Biltong's better than jerky, I joke, but it, it is a real um, kind of uh, cultural sensitive thing because Americans love their jerky and I mean it certainly is good from a lot of perspectives so when it comes to actually producing it um, effectively price competitively etc there's an uphill battle with that but we see for example um, retailers like like uh, Sprouts and um, Whole Foods led the way now we have products in, in Walmart and, and others as well so um, it is a thing. Um, certainly, is a little bit different when you taste it here um, in in mainstream packaged goods. But um, I, I think uh, the market is growing for sure. Hope that answers some insight for you, Andrew. Are they are they marketing it as Bolton? Uh, that that term yes. Bolton is it being used? Okay. Yes, absolutely. And um, not to be confused with bull tongue, right? So we get a lot of funny questions from Americans, but I mean, the, the word is getting out there. Great, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we only have another hand from Dineo. Um, Andrew, yours is still up. Okay, maybe you'll have another question. Um, Dineo, please go ahead.
Hi, hi everyone. I we seem to be unable to hear from Dineo. Okay, yes. Hi, Dineo. We are unable to hear you. Okay, while she's um, sorting out some technical issues from her side, if there's another hand or someone who wants to ask um, another question, please uh, raise up your hand and we will then go back to Dineo. Okay, wow, it looks like our presenters have done a very good job in, um, and I seem to be unable to even locate Dineo from the, let me have a look quickly. Dineo, can you still hear us? <clears throat> okay. Okay. I will have an opportunity to send an email to her and then through you, Adorin, we will be able to get her chance for her un um, question to be answered. If that is, I, I hope that is acceptable. Let's uh, move on. I would like now to give our last speaker, Mr. Lecheme Mapeto, who is the Deputy Director, Trade Development and Promotion in Pumalanga Department of Economic Development and Tourism, to give us our closing remarks. Mr. Lecheme, oh, is, oh, okay. I'm back. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> hi, um, hi, everyone. Hi. How are you guys? I'm going to stay on video because I want to apologize. I don't know what happened with my... Um. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a couple of questions before we close off. Mm -hmm. um, as a baby manufacturer, um, I just wanted to find out, um, as someone who is starting out in the industry, um in terms i mean i won't okay i'm gonna be honest I'm, I'm, a, I'm a baby in this industry but i won't lie um every time i've approached um a retail store or and and whatever else i've, I've i haven't walked away defeated but what i want to know is now from a, a bigger scale when it comes to um because i do a lot of like um what do you call this um more like african style so i'm sure um it would be more um received so in terms of tax and just like just the the, the small things that we never discuss like when you buy stuff overseas and then all of a sudden it's like you paid three thousand for this next thing you have to pay two thousand rand for duty fees that's my concern in terms of the cost implications what are they for us as manufacturers that are trying to branch out Okay, Dineo, um, is that your first question? If you have... First and only. <laughs> oh, first and only. <laughs> you started by saying you have some questions. Okay, I will allow... Um, I sent one in the... Yeah. While they are answering that question... Um, Maybe I can take it. Okay. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Hi, hi, Dineo, it's Andrew from Mega. Hi, Andrew. We'll be very happy to, to engage with you. you know, it's, it's very difficult for us to give a direct answer right now until we've looked at your product, looked at your market, done the proper costing and, and that. So, you know, um, uh, you, where are you based? I'm based in Pumalanga, uh, in Nelsbridge. 
And what product are you manufacturing? So I'm currently uh, doing bath, body, and I started working on home, like candles and stuff. Are you one of our um, exhibitors coming to Cytex by any chance? I was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> we received your work. They haven't, they haven't said Can anything. They said to me I that they didn't see your black right bottle. Right <laughs> okay, sorry guys, but Danae, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it's not something we can address on, on this platform. Of course, of course. <laughs> but we look, we look forward to sitting down with you and, and getting to know your business and yeah. you more often. And, and then, you know, we've got quite a number of, of years of expertise and I'm sure we can advise you appropriately. No, I definitely need, yeah, I also need, I need some, yeah, I need some guidance. I won't lie. Great, we'll set up a meeting. Okay, great. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Miguel from Cedar, so she's got all my details. But you've also got them, obviously, from this um, lecture. So, yeah, Miguel is the one who sent uh, D goodness. Uh, yes, so goodness D. Yes, I can see your beautiful packaged products. <laughs> we would. I've been making. I'm it. actually. I keep moving away to make more candles. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm adding some more stuff to the. That's yeah. beautiful. Thank okay, you. we will definitely engage. And thank, um, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure. Uh, just a quick check to see if there are any other questions. It looks like we don't have um, questions. And then I will give this opportunity to Mr. Lecheme to give us uh, closing remarks. Thank you, Mr. Lecheme. Thank you very much, Azri. Indeed, time flies when you're having fun. Um, USA crew, mega crew, Lady Azri for great moderation. Thank you very much. George, thank you very much for your leadership. Andrew, we hope that uh, Mpumalanga indeed is going to, to receive lots of inquiries. Paul, thank you very much uh, for your advice. Abigail, I mean, um, the opportunities are endless in the US. Warwick, um, your potential intervention, I think, will be appreciated by our small businesses. Um, Slomo, e-commerce is the future. Thank you very much, sir. To all the sponsors, um, on behalf of Mpumalanga, thank you very much. Indeed, actions speaks louder than words. Um, I'll end there. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Those who are on a different timeline, good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lecheme. Um, I would like to say it's a it's a wrap. And yes, we are just on time by three minutes. Thank you, everyone. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lady Azri.